Okay, we've had some easy ones. Now it's time for a couple of tough ones. Uh, this is duty and its associated terms, so continuous duty, intermittent duty, things of that nature. Now these definitions are all having to do with motors. So when you read the term continuous duty, it says it's something that operates at a substantially constant load for an indefinite duration of time. You know, if all you did is read that definition, you, you might not know that it's talking about motors, all right? So if you go to section 430.22e, and that talks about conductor sizing, you'll see that you size conductors for motors based on the type of motor that they are, whether it's a continuous duty or an intermittent duty or different uh, you know, duty cycles. So let's start with the simplest, and that's continuous duty. Again, something that operates at a substantially constant load for an indefinite duration of time. The best example that I can think of would be the moving sidewalk at the airport or an escalator. They do not have a starting point or a stopping point, right? It's not like it, it hits the, you know, it gets to the end of where it's going and it stops. It, it's continuously going forever in indefinite duration of time at a substantially constant load. So, you know, constant load, yeah, people get on and off, sure, but it's pretty well accepted, you know, expected that you're gonna have people on the moving sidewalk and going up and down the escalator, uh, you know, substantially uh, and at an inde indefinite duration of time. So most motors, if you look at 430.22e, we consider most motors to be a continuous duty motor unless they have a definite stopping and starting point. An intermittent duty would be a motor or something that operates at intervals of load and no load, load and rest, or load, no load, rest. So an elevator would be a really good example, or a wheelchair lift, right? Load and no load. Think about it. If you're in a wheelchair and you need to get up these stairs here, you're going to use the wheelchair lift. So you might push the button and call the lift down. That would be no load, right? The motor is going, but it's not under load. Then we put you in it and we push the button and go up. That's load. So we have load, no load. We have load and rest, which of course is you get out of it and then it's resting. There is no load. There's, there's nothing whatsoever. It's not even on. Or we can go load, no load, rest, right? So we get on, we get off, we stop. So elevators, great example. You push the button, it's moving, but there's no load. Then you get on, then there is a load. Then you get off and maybe it's five minutes until somebody else pushes the button, so it's resting. So an intermittent duty, uh, in my opinion, the best example would be an elevator. Periodic duty. That means that it operates intermittently with a load that is regularly recurrent. So a coal conveyor would be a great example. Some sort of a conveyor belt uh, that, that has something that is, it, it's a similar load and it, and it happens off and on all the time. So here is a conveyor. This is at a, uh, th this is for coal. This is at a coal, uh, coal powered uh, coal-fired power plant, easy for me to say, and we load it up with coal and we ship it from point A to point B and then we shut it off. And then we do it a few hours later and we load it up and we ship it from point A to point B and there you go. That would be periodic duty. We also have short time duty, which is operating at a substantially constant load for a short time that is definite and specified. Garage door opener. Nice, simple example, right? It's substantially constant load. So you push the button and that thing is already under load, right? The second you start the motor, it's having to drag the load upwards. And that's why uh, if you're into motors, that's why we would use a design D motor for a, for a garage door opener or, or an elevator. So it operates at a constant load. It's the garage door, doesn't really change. For a short time, that's definite and specified. It goes from here to here, and that's the load. So that's a short time duty. 
Lastly, we have varying duty, which you know is just what it sounds like. Operating at loads with wide variations as to their loads and durations of time. So it's a motor that does all sorts of different things. Um, you know, in the example here, I just took a picture of a big motor because I think that motor is cool looking. You know, in all honesty, is that actually a varying duty motor? I don't know. You know, to be perfectly honest, but a varying duty motor operates at loads with wide variations as to their loads and their durations of time. So there you go. Those are our different types of duties as it relates to motors. So when you read continuous duty, here's the thing to remember. A continuous load is something that operates at its peak for three hours or more. We already talked about that. A continuous duty is a completely different application. So it's really important to me that you understand the difference between continuous load and continuous duty. And then continuous duty compared to intermittent duty, short time duty, varying duty, and those other types. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.